ऑफ करा देना प्लीज हेलो एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग हाउ वाई यू ऑल सो लेट सी हू ऑल एव ज्वाइन डर्स एंड यस वेलकम बैक अगेन एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी नर्वस सिस्टम विच इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी बेनिफिशियल इन द एग्जामिनेशन इन द इवनिंग वी डिस्कस एस एस सी सी जी एस थ्योरी पार्ट अलॉन्ग विद एम सी क्यूज एंड इन द मॉर्निंग वी आर अवेयर ऑफ वी आर कवरिंग ऑल द एस एस सी एग्जामिनेशन वेयर वेन एवर आई टॉक अबाउट द मॉर्निंग सेशन डेट मीन्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन सो हेयर विदाउट एनी डिले लेट स्टार्ट विद सेशन दैट इज योर नर्वस सिस्टम नाउ वॉट इज इट लेट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट नर्वस सिस्टम द थिंग डेट मस्ट क्लिक इन आर माइंड इज nervous system that means we are talking about our brain we are talking about our nerves we are talking about those neurons we are talking about spinal cord but 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 what is it exactly and what it is doing that's the most important thing from where we will be taking the clarity so sudesh has joined us hello sudesh good evening how are you and yes sudesh we are discussing nervous system so what is it nervous system is actually the network of tissues now what are tissues we have already discussed cell is the basic unit of life basic fun a uh, fundamental unit from our body here when we talk about several cells they actually combine together and form tissue now there are since cells were of different different types in the similar way tissues are also of different types so it's if i talk about the network of tissues which are communicating via electrochemical signals now you must be wondering sir what they are communicating how is it possible so i'll take a example over here and we'll be easily understanding how this communication is done and how this communication is actually playing a significant role in our body so yes shubham has also joined hello shubham good evening i am good i am good how are you so yes we are talking about this electrochemical signals and this nervous system is actually responsible for receiving and processing the information now information what kind of information let's take the example let's take the example of this water bottle if i talk about this water bottle let us assume it's very hot let's assume we have just put a boiling water in this bottle now what will happen as soon as my body will touch this particular bottle it will sense something now you must be wondering sir we already know water is hot that means your body will be facing this issue that this particular hand will think oh it is hot no if i'm talking about this hotness my hand doesn't know about it so what will happen as soon as my hand will touch this it will sense something and in this condition information will be sent to the central nervous system what i'm talking about i'm talking about this electrochemical signals what what is happening again i'm saying as soon as i touch the hot bottle this hand or this finger or whatever part actually touched it is sending the signal to the central nervous system and it is asking what is actually happening is it cold is it hot what is it should i keep on touching it now what will happen here another role will come where central nervous system is going to play its role how it is playing its role we'll be understanding that let's move forward as i was talking about this nervous system function so there are two functions one is sensory one is uh one is sensory function and another is motor function so knowledge has joined us hello knowledge how are you so yes i was talking about the sensory function so it is gathering the information from both inside and outside the body first of all we are talking about only sensory and then we'll be talking about motor function now what's the motor function just wait so yes it is gathering the information we discussed about that bottle isn't it it was gathering information what is it is it cold is it hot what it is actually doing so here if i talk about it's about its part more so integration of body processes the it processes the information in the brain and spine that means what happened as soon as those signals were sent to the central nervous system central nervous system is consisting of those nerves that is neurons apart from that there is brain and spine spine in our back side so yes this was the sensory function now if i talk about the motor function it is doing what it is now sending the signal what kind of signal if it is very very hot brain will say just 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 try to remove the bottle from your hand otherwise those particular cells will destroy otherwise there would be some issue that will be caused to your body or if it is normally hot the, there would be signal 
and it would be told that yes, it is actually hot. Or if it is cold, then brain will be sending signal that yes, this thing is cold. Now this is another thing we discussed about that gland, isn't it? That was hypothalamus, which is the part of brain. So one by one, we'll be having discussion on that. But try to understand these electrochemical signals. Again, I am saying if I talk about those sensory functions, they were sensing something. What is it exactly? And motor function is telling, okay, so this skeletal muscle, please move in such a manner that your body will remain fine and nothing can destroy you. So yes, let's have a look. Motor function is sending the information to the muscles or glands or organs so that they can respond appropriately. What kind of information? That you can just remove this bottle, you can keep your bottle in your hand, but it is warm in nature or it is cold in nature. So this is exactly those chemical signals which are helping you out in keeping your body safe. So are these both things clear? Everyone, knowledge of Shubham, Sudesh, everyone who has joined the session, kindly like the session and share it. And yes, kindly let me know, is that okay? So please give me thumbs up. I'm asking about this modern sensory function. I guess it is clear now. If I am holding something or whatever is happening with my body, signals are first sent to the central nervous system and then signals are sent back what action is to be taken. So this was sensory and motor function. So is it clear? Everyone, and yes, everyone is requested to kind, kindly please share this session and like it. So yes, moving forward now, talking about the parts of nervous system. So as I already told to you, if I talk about nervous system, there is a brain, there is a spinal cord, there are several neurons or nerves. Now if I talk about central nervous system, it is actually linked with peripheral nervous system where this information is sent. Then there are motor division and sensory division. Sensory division, it is doing what? If I talk about afferent nerves, A, and here it is E. So afferent nerves are actually sending the information towards the central nervous system. And this E, afferent division here, actually the signals are sent back from the central nervous system to other parts of the body. So yes, if I talk about nervous system, so it includes brain, spinal cord and nerves. We will be having discussion on the nerves as well, where we will be discussing about dendrites, axons, everything. But till now is everything okay? We have just discussed the basic part and we have understood how this nervous system is actually working. Now one by one we will be having discussion everything in detail. So waiting for the comment from everyone. Is everything fine till now? Everything is understood? What is nervous system? What all parts are there? How sensory motor? How mot motor function is actually working? How sensory function is working? So we have understood these things moving forward. So there's a question for you all. Nervous system consists of what? So there are uh, four options over here. One is brain and spinal cord. Second is nerves. Third one is both A and B. Fourth one is none of the above. So let's see who gives the correct answer over here. Yes, everyone. And everyone is again requested to kindly like this session and share it. So if I talk about the nervous system, so it is consisting of what? Okay, Nikita, fine. I guess I'm getting your comments quite late, huh? Nikita is with C and that's totally correct. Both A and B would be the correct answer because if I talk about only brain and spinal cord, then no. Actually, our nerves are also playing a significant role in sending those signals. So yes, nerves, brain, spinal cord, all are the parts of nervous system. Therefore, option number C will be correct. So Nikita, you are absolutely correct. Great. Now, before moving forward, let me tell you there's an exam for application where you have live paid courses with the test series. You have free subject wise and topic wise quizzes with the report cards. There are job alerts, admit card, examination dates, all examinations previous year PDFs with the solution, free all India scholarship tests with the report cards. Apart from that, you're also having topic wise free live classes, free full length and sectional test with the report card, free exam wise PDFs and practice set PDFs, daily, weekly and monthly current affairs and unlimited subject wise practice questions. All these things are just present in a single application. Now, how you can download it? Just go to the Play Store, type example over there, click on the install button, just click on the open part, do some registration and yes, you are ready with it. Now, there is an announcement. There is an examination that is coming of UP SC PET. So here, you can take the master test series with 10 full length test series, section test for every subject, live discussion of full length test at just rupee 1. 
So this price is slashed from 999 to just rupee 1 by using the code PT99. So just start using it. It is going to be very, very beneficial for you. Yes. So now let's talk about the important organs. If I talk about the important organs, just as have a look at this body. Here, if I talk about the human vertebral column, that is, I already told you, if I talk about the dorsal part of our body or backside of our body, we have spinal cord over here, correct? So if I talk about the vertebral column, in the starting part, we have cervical spine, then we have thoracic spine, then there is lumbar spine, then there is sacrum and coccyx bone. So these things, hello Sana, good evening. So these things or these particular bones are present in a backside of our body. We'll be understanding about it in a human skeleton system once again. So these are actually the back part bones. So yes, there was a question which was asked in the morning. I was actually waiting for everyone to come. Then I'll ask about the tetanus question. So yes, coming back on this part. So if I talk about the import, important nervous system organs, there are brain, spinal cord, sensory organs, all of the nerves that connect these organs with the rest of the body. Now, what, what they are actually doing? They are responsible for control of the body and communication among its parts. Now, you must be wondering, sir, what is it? This is theoretical part. Let's take an example. I took the example of a hot water bottle, correct? Whenever we touch anything very hot, just take an example. It happened many times before using the CFL bulbs, there were, or LED bulbs, there were bulbs which were actually consuming a lot of light. Remember, those particular bulbs in which argon gas was, were there and apart from that, there was a wire of tungsten wire. Whenever that bulb used to get fused and we used to take that out, as soon as we used to touch, we get we used to get to know that, yes, it is very hot. At that time, what used to happen? There were signals which were actually sent from your this hand part till the brain and it was asked, what is this? What I am actually sensing? So here the brain was playing a significant role or rather I'll say spinal cord used to play a significant role. What they used to say? They used to send the message directly from this nerves part via electrochemical signals that please, please do not touch that. Otherwise your cells of that particular part will destroy. So here, actually signals were sent, then again they were received back to the skeletal muscles and accordingly we used to do that action. So the same thing is mentioned over here. It is actually controlling the body. Apart from that, it is doing communication among its part. So understood the communication? How that communication was done? Oh, bulb is hot. Sorry, what is this? So here, signal came. Oh, bulb is hot. Commanding the, uh, this particular skeletal muscle, please take your hand back or pull your hand back. So this was actually communication. Talking about the control of the body, I'll give you the example. Brain, very, very important part, which actually tells us, okay, she is good. He looks good. She is good by nature. He is good by nature. Or remembering anything. Oh, last 14th Feb was awesome one. Uh, she gave me this gift. I gave her that gift. Yesterday we went to that particular cafe. So there must be something in which this storage is done, correct? So this storage is actually done in the cerebrum part of the brain. So there are several parts of the brain which are actually playing these significant roles. What all roles are there? One by one, we'll be understanding about that. So before moving forward, I want to ask, is there anything which you want to ask or is there any doubt? So Sana, Nikita, Knowledge, Shubham, Sudesh, anyone. Is there any sort of doubt? Anyone. So that we can proceed further. Is everything correct? Waiting. Is everything correct? Sana Nikita, knowledge, Shubham, Sudesh, waiting for the comments. And if it is correct, we can move forward then. I was talking about neurons, correct? So let's understand what are they actually. We understood, so those signals were uh, sent by something. Okay, Nikita, fine, cool. What I was saying, those signals were actually sent by something. What were they? Here, we are talking about this neuron. Neuron, remember, it is consisting of this axon part. This is actually the axon part. Here, these branches are actually known as dendrites from where the signal transmission is actually done. They are sending signals to the next one. Next one is sending to the third one. Third one is sending to the fourth one. And in the similar manner, this is sent to the brain. Now, again, when it comes back, so in the similar manner, these signals are transferred from this part. Then in the center, there is nucleus. And obviously, if nucleus is there, nucleoplasm would be there. If I'll talk about cell, then cytoplasm would be there. So yes, here we have Schwann cells, node of Renvier, million sheet, then accent terminal, 
remember these parts because in the examination it is asked action is related with which of the following so one of the option would be the neuron please remember these are the parts of neuron now very important thing do you know if i talk about several cells cells keep on dividing which is that particular cell which never divides i'll give you an option is it nerve cell is it nerve cell is it rbc is it wbc or all of the above all of the above let's see which one is the correct answer i'm asking which one among us the following never divides now this is very important question for the examination it has been asked many times in many of the examinations so what is going to be the correct answer which of the following cell never divides is it nerve cell is it rbc is it wbc or each and every cell can actually divide so yes waiting can actually never divide yes so which among us the following cell never divides i am writing here i am changing the color till then you, you can get me the answer which of the following cell never divides very important question so yes if i talk about rbc's wbc's then obviously that is not going to be the answer nikita you are 100% correct nerve cell is going to be the correct answer nerve cell is never dividing nerve cell never divides so okay so this was the question so if i'll talk about neurons these are the microscopic structures which are containing the cell body dendrites and axon we have, we have seen that these branches are actually dendrites this is the axon part and if i'll talk about the ending part so ending is actually known as axon terminal so yes this is actually a neuron now if i'll talk about the brain brain is divided into three parts which, which one if i'll talk about brain it is actually divided into three parts front brain that is fore brain mid brain and hind brain so fore brain mid brain hind brain are the three parts of the brain if i'll go into the detail so first of all we can discuss about cerebrum then cerebellum and then brain stem so first of all let's go with the fore brain cerebrum what is it now try to understand all these things in the detailed manner first of all if i'll talk about cerebrum it is the main thinking part of the brain so whatever you are thinking or i can talk about the reasoning skill we say that this guy is intelligent this girl is intelligent so how that particular decision is actually taken so here we'll say that whenever we are talking about the intelligence here we can talk about cerebrum apart from that apart from the intelligence we can talk about the reasoning power so it is from the cerebrum itself and the most important thing if someone is asking you about the memory if someone is asking you about the memory storage so this memory storage is also done in the cerebrum itself let's take an example uh if i talk about our mobile phones or if i talk about a computers in that also memory is there isn't it whatever movie i am watching whatever uh, i data data i want to save that is actually saving in one of the location what is that that may be your hard disk drive or solid state drives that is ssds true in the similar manner what i was just taking the example if i'll talk about any of the example that when i was 5 years now this happened when i was 10 years this thing happened uh before if i'll talk about past 5 years all these were my previous experiences from last 6 years i i've been teaching i've been this field i've done this i'm selected in this 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 examinations all these things must be saved somewhere correct so here whenever you're talking about that storage memory storage it is done where it is done in the cerebrum part itself <clears throat> the most important thing if someone asks you which is the largest part of the brain so do not forget that the cerebrum itself is the largest part of the brain if i'll talk about several parts of the brain so this cerebrum is the largest one so again i am saying cerebrum is the largest part of the brain it is the main thinking area memory storage is done here intelligence of a person or reasoning power of a person is actually to is actually derived from this part itself this cerebrum actually tells that this particular person is intelligent or he is having a wonderful reasoning ability fine so this is all about cerebrum now before moving forward is there anything that you want to ask or is there any doubt or you want to take any other example if you want any other example also that also i can give 
because I have all the examples with movies as well. So yes, before moving forward, just want to confirm, is everything clear till now? Is everything clear till now? Everyone. And yes, who all, who all are there in the session, kindly like the session and share it. So yes, we have discussed the first part of the brain, that is if I talk about the forebrain. So here, cerebrum is the first thing that we have discussed. Now, if I talk about cerebral hemispheres, so this cerebral hemisphere is actually dealing with the intelligence and voluntary actions. Voluntary action means what? Voluntary actions are actually those actions which is within our control. Whatever thing is within our control, if I want to write here, for example, I want to write here brain. So this hand is moving according to me. I want to write brain, so I am writing brain over here. Why? Because it is in my control. So whatever thing is in, within my control, we can say that we are talking about the voluntary action. Now, moving forward, if I talk about the olfactory lobes, now what is it? Centers of smell. You smell something, you say, sir, this is good smell, this is bad smell. So from where we actually know about it? So here, olfactory lobes are playing a significant role in telling you that this thing is actually good in smell or this is the foul smell. So these things are covered by olfactory lobes. Now comes your diencephalon. What is it? Diencephalon. If I talk about this diencephalon, so it includes your thalamus part. Thalamus, hypothalamus, but, but before moving forward, <coughs> this diencephalon in which I have discussed about thalamus, correct? So let's have a look who will give this answer. When I am talking about thalamus, thalamus, or rather I will say I am talking about hypothalamus because we have discussed this, hypothalamus. So if I am talking about hypothalamus, it is also known as one more thing. What is it? I will give you a hint. When I am talking about pineal gland, when I am talking about a pineal gland, it is known as master gland. This pineal gland is actually known as master gland because it is controlling other glands which includes your thyroid there are several gl glands but but this hypothalamus is also known as something so who will tell me hypothalamus is known as what hypothalamus and obviously it is the part of brain where i have already discussed what diencephalon so waiting for the answer if i'll ask about hypothalamus who can tell me what is the name that is given to it. Pineal we have discussed, sorry pituitary we have discussed. Pituitary gland is actually known as master gland. Oh, I have written pineal over here. Pineal is the smallest. Pituitary gland is the master gland. Pituitary is the master gland. And if I write about pineal, pineal is the smallest gland. So in the similar way, if I talk about hypothalamus, it is known as what? It is known as master of the master gland. Master of the master gland. Why it is known as master of the master gland? Master of the master gland because it is the master of pituitary gland. Correct? So yes, Happy has joined us. Master switchboard. Yeah, that's true. So hello Happy, good evening. So I guess these things are clear to you. Now let's talk about motor areas. What are motor areas? Motor areas are actually instructing the muscles to do various types of jobs. For example, I want to move this hand in such a manner. So these hand movements, these leg movements, all these movements are controlled by what? Motor areas. As already discussed, we were discussing about sensory function, motor function, correct? So yes, Niketa is saying master switchboard, that was correct. So Udbhav has joined. Hello Udbhav, good evening. So yes, all these things are from forebrain. Now before moving forward, I have a question for you all before moving to the midbrain. If I talk about a movie that is Jab Tak Hai Jaan, I guess everyone has watched it. In that, there was Katrina Kaif, there was uh, Shah Rukh Khan was there. Apart from that, one more actress was there. Uh, I guess Anushka Sharma was there. So after a long time, after a long hospitalized period, I guess it was Katrina Kaif or it was Shah Rukh Khan who forgot all those particular years. And just it was he was just thinking that he is in that particular year. So that particular memory was actually lost. Correct? So this loss occurred in which part of the brain? Who can tell me? This memory loss occurs in which part of the brain? Memory loss. Any guesses? Any guesses will work. Any guesses is going to work. And if you have not watched Jab Tak Then I will take another movie's example. 
if you have watched hollywood movies then we'll go with the hollywood movies but i want the answer whenever memory loss is there this means we are talking about which part any guesses that's true nikita absolutely correct the correct answer is going to be cerebrum because cerebrum is actually that main storage area where all those data are stored correct so awesome very very good so yes let's move forward now with the midbrain here first of all the part that comes is the tectum so this tectum is controlling the reflex movements of the neck head and trunk in response to visual and auditory stimuli now you must be wondering what is it just imagine the scenario in which we are sitting in an offline class for example and in the ending in the extreme end there are some of the students who are actually uh, disturbing the whole class so what we can do we can just throw a chalk at that time or a duster so what will happen the student on which we have just thrown that chalk he'll do what he'll just move just he'll just try to move so that that chalk doesn't hurt him or the duster doesn't hurt him correct so i have never done, done that but my teachers used to do the same so that's why i have given this example apart from that there are other examples as well but right now you all are not that active where i can take the examples of those 14th feb valentines day and all but yes this teachers example would be good so whenever something is thrown to you and you are just moving like this this is actually a reflex action correct so here we are talking about the response to visual or auditory stimuli so here which part is playing the significant role here tectum is playing the significant role now moving forward let's talk about cerebral pendulum now if i talk about the cerebral pendulum it is also controlling the reflex movements of the eye muscles changes in the pupil's eye and the shape of eye lens now you must be wondering sir what eye lens shape how is it actually done hello nena good evening how are you quiet right now so yes now we are talking about the cerebral pendicle it is controlling the reflex movements of the eye muscles where changes of pupil size and all so when it is done we'll take an example if someone is having dark tiles in their washrooms at their homes for example light goes off and inverter is not working what will happen as soon as you open the door and try to enter the washroom you'll be just totally blank that is you can't see anything but once you are into the washroom slowly and slowly you will be able to check that this is bucket this is the mug this is the soap and everything how it is done because here now our eyes are actually able to see why because there are rods and cones which are present in our eyes isn't it so yes this role is done by or played by cerebral pendicle so this is the part of midbrain now let's talk about the hind brain which is very important actually for the examination and here first of all comes your pons what are they they regulate the respiration what is respiration breathing in breathing out this process then it relays information between the cerebellum and cerebrum now do not get confused with this part yes nikita that's right that's right pupil size increases at the time yes so i was talking about this here are two different terms cerebellum and cerebrum are they different yes they are different now i am going to tell you a trick please remember it by that trick till now we have only only discussed about cerebrum where we have understood sir it is actually the storage area where memory was there correct we are talking about the thinking part main thinking area this was cerebrum but if i'll talk about this cerebellum just try to have a look at this word cerebellum bell bell for balance correct if i'll write balance also balance just try to read it what is it bell balance if i use this trick this will just not create any type of confusion otherwise in the examination we just get confused between cerebellum and cerebrum just remember balance bell in the similar manner cerebellum cerebellum so here again bell is coming so bell bell cerebellum is actually helping in the body is balance so this is important do not forget whenever we are talking about the body balance this means we are talking about cerebellum and here i am writing again marking this bell from here this bell you can remember we are talking about balance we are talking about balance what kind of balance we are talking about body balance so let's have a look over here cerebellum is maintaining the posture and balance of the body 
एंड दे आर एनेबलिंग अस टू मेक प्रिसाइज एंड एक्यूरेट मूवमेंट बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सेरिबेल एम ओनली वी आर एबल टू मूव इन अ प्रॉपर मैनर अदरवाइज वी विल बी नॉट मूविंग इन द प्रॉपर मैनर कैन यू गिव मी एन एग्जाम्पल एनी एग्जाम्पल इन विच वी आर नॉट एबल टू मूव इन द प्रॉपर मैनर एंड वेन इट हैपन्स कैन एनी वन गिव मी दिस एग्जाम्पल नैना उद्भव निकिता सना एनी वन so happy can we have this example i guess you have this answer i am talking about when we are not able to move in the proper manner any one scenario when we are not able to move in the proper way who can give this answer when we cannot move in the proper manner any of the one inst uh, incident that you have seen or have faced no one let's discuss here i can talk about the alcoholic person if someone has consumed alcohol what will happen at that time at this time the cerebellum part will come in rest position and here since it is balancing your body's posture oh yeah nikita that's true we can talk about the spin also so yes after this alcohol i'm going to come on that part so yes if a person is alcoholic here the cerebellum will actually rest and when it will rest that means your body is not going to maintain its posture in the similar manner when we spin fine that is we are talking about the rotation when we spin what happens at that time here actually there is a fluid which is present in our ear that also starts moving correct so in that condition what is happening because of the movement of that fluid until it comes to the rest we think or we are unable to move in the proper manner or we will say that we are unable to maintain our body's posture in the proper manner so nikita that's true but that is because of the presence of that fluid correct yes so here gor thank you thank you sir thank you thank you for the same so yes i was talking about the cerebellum so cerebellum is doing what we can just related with the bell that is balance fine so how are you sir how are you after a long time i have actually seen you and read your comment so i guess you are fine now so yes i was talking about cerebellum it is clear now now let's discuss about this part that is medulla what is this medulla if i talk about medulla we are talking about medulla oblongata now it's a very very important thing why because this is asked in the examination at times that's why i'm writing it very important please remember medulla oblongata is the important part of the brain because it is controlling all the involuntary actions whatever are they all the involuntary actions it may be sneezing it may be vomiting whatever you think that is not within your control that is not within your control is actually controlled by your medulla oblongata always remember that we are talking about the involuntary actions that is those actions which are not within our control let's take the example it controls all the inter, um, involuntary actions such as breathing controlling center for the reflexes such as swallowing coughing vomiting whatever is coming into your mind that is controlled by medulla oblongata fine so please do not uh, do not forget because this is asked in the examination many many times so yes we have discussed about this involuntary actions as well now we can take one of the example then we'll move forward <coughs> let's take a example let's assume what happens i have been taking this class from last 35 minutes true now from 35 minutes last 35 minutes i have never thought that i must take uh, i must take in the oxygen or i must breathe why because at the back end this medulla oblongata is already working even you all you all of you you have been listening to this lecture from past 35 minutes but sorry yawning yeah that's true that's true you must be thinking so desh if i'm talking about the blinking of the eye also it may be controlled i can just keep my eyes open but try to understand it is actually acting as as a at the back end we are not trying to control it from the last 35 minutes sudesh even you have not thought that i must be then otherwise i'll die we never think that why because it is actually acting at the back end so here all the involuntary actions whatever are they they are controlled by medulla oblongata so i guess this example is clear to you all please do not forget because it is asked in the examination many times fine so yes let's move forward now there is a question dash regulates the muscular movement for locomotion now what is this locomotion first of all let's have the answer then we will move forward so yes there is a question for you all dash regulates the muscular movement for locomotion who will give this answer waiting for the answer controlling the locomotion 
see if you are confused with this word that we are talking about locomotion we are actually talking about the movement because of which we are actually able to walk or run fine so yes nikita is with the first option that is a sudesh waiting for your answer please then we have nena we have udbhav everyone please waiting for the answer dash regulates the muscular movement for the locomotion is it cerebellum is it medulla is it, is it thalamus or is it cerebrum yeah that's true whenever we'll talk about the movement this means we are talking about the body's posture in which our body needs to be balanced correct so that's totally correct nikita udbhav you are absolutely correct we are talking about cerebellum over here and we have already discussed this whenever we are talking about bell just related with the balance correct so we are talking about the body's balance we are talking about the body's balance so this body's balance is actually are uh, taken care of by cerebellum if i talk about this medulla this medulla is doing what this medulla is actually controlling all the involuntary actions let me write for you all it is controlling all the involuntary involuntary actions then if i talk about this thalamus this is the part of diencephalon remember so we can talk about the temperature and all and yes obviously the cerebrum cerebrum which is your main thinking area so it is actually your main thinking area so yes we have discussed all the options and here option number a is correct so here the option number a is correct moving forward to the next question dash are attached to the brain and emerge from the skull what is it question is asked dash are attached to the brain and emerge from the skull what is the correct answer is it spinal nerve nerve is it cranial nerve is it both or is it none of the above who will give this answer yes this is the important one nikita is with a that is spinal nerve okay so if i talk about this spinal nerve try to understand whenever we are talking about this skull this means we are talking about brain correct that is we are talking about this area in which brain is there and this part is actually known as skull correct so this skull is actually it is having what this is cranium part so from cranium you can relate the cranial term please remember what i am saying if i am talking about the spinal cord over there then you can link with the spinal nerve if i am talking about the skull that means i am talking about the cranium part see these tricks are very important because it is going to be beneficial if i talk about the cranium part that means i can relate it with this term crane that is cranial so here from here you can just relate it and yes cranial would be the correct answer so option number b that is cranial nerve is going to be the correct answer i guess nikita you can use this trick in the examination as well correct so you'll never be wrong now so whenever i am talking about this particular part here just related with the cranium that is your cranial part and here cranial nerve would be the correct answer moving forward so here b option is correct next let's talk about the brain disorders so if i talk about the brain disorder that means we are talking about several issues which are related with our brain correct so here what kind of issues can be some major categories of brain diseases are first of all is in inflammation then second one is trauma third one is tumor then comes a stroke then there are seizures so these are actually the brain disorders let's have a discussion on them now first of all talk about traumatic brain injury when it actually happens we can take the example of an accident what happens if a person is there who is actually sitting in a car now he meets an accident what will happen he will actually tend to move forward or backward what will happen at that instant there would be a issue in your brain correct so here you can say that an injury to the brain and its part which is mostly caused due to the accidents or rupture of internal organs or you can talk about other brain injuries which includes the blood clots that is blood clotting can occur so this is actually your traumatic brain injury you can where you can directly take the example of an accident where you can easily relate it fine so yes moving forward now next if i talk about brain tumor what is it there was a term which we discussed in the morning when we talk about cancer what is it if i talk about cancer there is a rapid rapid division in the cell that is from a single cell there are other cells which are coming correct so there is rapid division in the cell and this rapid division in the cell leads to cancer 
in the similar manner if i'll talk about tumor what is there in the tumor in the tumor there is rapid division in the tissues so there is rapid division in the tissues or we can say that there is abnormal growth in the tissues fine so yes actually it's not the division division is there in the cell actually it is the normal it's more than the normal growth or we'll say abnormal growth actually so there's the abnormal growth of the tissues in the brain you can just take the example over here just have a look so there was this part where there was again it was growing and it was growing in such a number that finally it creates the issue in the brain this is actually a brain tumor now moving forward if i talk about neurodegenerative diseases from the word from the term neuro itself it is clear we are talking about the nerves correct so yes neurodegenerative diseases are the degenerative nerve diseases it ranges there is the range of conditions which primarily affects the neurons in the human brain now what happens just have a look at this image here this old person is actually thinking or trying to remember something correct so here we can discuss about three major diseases which includes alzheimer's disease which includes alzheimer disease here you can take the example of our ex prime minister very famous prime minister late uh, atal bihari vajpayee ji so atal bihari vajpayee ji was actually facing this issue that is alzheimer's disease in his last days in in that time at that time he used to forget everything fine so in this what happens all all the issues all the actual issues are actually linked with this nervous system so there's the issue in the nervous system and here we actually forget these things if i talk about this parkinson's disease again parkinson's and huntington's disease all these diseases are actually neurodegenerative diseases that is actually related to the nerve cell so aman has joined us aman you were quite late huh so hello aman you were quite late let's have question answer session and there we will be having discussion fine so yes aman there's a first question that is coming is involuntary actions in our body are controlled by what involuntary actions in our body are controlled by what is it cerebrum is it cerebellum is it thalamus or is it medulla oblongata which one will be the correct answer is it cerebrum is it cerebellum no issues no issues i just want you to be correct over here let's see you can just assume nikita is saying sir it would be d others yeah that's true whenever we are talking about the involuntary actions where we were talking about vomiting we were talking about uh, breathing respirate respiration and all so whatever comes in your mind blinking of the eye yeah udbhav aman good so you are correct in the first go itself so yes all those involuntary actions are controlled by medulla oblongata if i talk about thalamus we can talk about the body's temperature and all and abhishek has also joined us so welcome abhishek and yes abhishek is also totally correct and this one is actually very important question although it is very very simple also but from the brain part i don't know why the question is actually repeated maximum number of times from this medulla oblongata itself so yes medulla oblongata is actually dealing with the involuntary actions yes if i talk about cerebrum what is this this is the main thinking area or your memory is actually stored here fine aman if you will remember what happened 7 days before or with whom you were in the a uh, particular restaurant or cafe yesterday evening so all those things will actually be stored where in your cerebrum part cerebellum is dealing with the body's balancing so yes d option is correct totally correct next spinal cord originates from dash spinal cords origination is actually from what yeah so in the uh, hindi dum we'll talk about it as a small brain chhota dimag that's true abhishek so yes spinal cord is originating from which location is it cerebrum is it cerebellum is it medulla oblongata or is it th thalamus most recent aman so yes abhishek is with c and that's again the correct answer if i talk about the spinal cord's origination it is actually done from medulla oblongata the same medulla oblongata which is dealing with all the involuntary actions 100% correct yes option number c is going to be the correct answer next Broca's area is related to what? Now this one, ah, uh, Nikita is also correct with the option C that is medulla oblongata. But yes, waiting for the answer here. Broca's area is related to what? Aman, you are also correct. I guess I am getting your com comments quite late, ah. Huh? So we have a question here. My question is, Broca's area is related to what? Is it hearing? Is it smell? Is it speech? Or none of the above? 
सो वॉट विल बी दी करेक्ट आंसर वेटिंग प्लीज ब्रोकाज एरिया जस्ट थिंक ऑफ अनेरियो यू आर ऑन अ ट्रिप विद योर फ्रेंड्स एंड वॉट एपन्स यू जस्ट सडनली समवन जस्ट पास इज बाय यू एंड यू से ओ माई गॉड वॉट अ स्मेल वॉज दिस वॉट अ फ्रेगनेंस वॉट अ फ्रेगनेंस वॉट इज वॉज इट एंड जस्ट इमेजिन ऑफ एनदर सीनेरियो ऑल्सो इन विच यू आर विद योर फ्रेंड यू आर मूविंग ऑन अ रोड एंड यू जस्ट गेट अ फाउल स्मेल ओ शेट मैन वी हैव यू हैव एक्चुअली कम सो दैट फाउल स्मेल ऑफ फ्रेगनेंस दिस मस्ट बी डेल्ट बाय समवन ना सो इट्स एक्चुअली योर ब्रोकाज एरिया सो ब्रोकाज area is actually dealing with your speech part that is your speech and if i talk about the smell then you will find that it would be your olfactory area olfactory please do not forget this is very important when we whenever we talk about the olfactory so it would be your smell and whenever we are talking about the speech it is your broca's area so here yes that's true if i talk about the synthol and all so whenever we are talking about the olfactory area so here you can talk about synthol or other deodorants where you can talk about fog and all but yes synthol is the best one huh? i am not promoting that it's actually abhishek's favorite brand huh? so yes whenever you are talking about speech it is dealt by broca's area and if i'll talk about the olfactory you can relate it with the smell moving forward so yes we have up triple sc pt master test series you can just buy it at just rupee 1 how you have to use the code a uh, politicians broca's area is best that's absolutely correct that's absolutely correct they'll just keep on speaking something and you must be wondering how they're actually speaking uh trick bolne se yeah that's that's true this would be good one that it would be good one so yes let me complete this part first up triple sc pt master test series you can just buy at rupee 1 how you can you can use the code pt99 and your price will flash from triple nine to just rupee 1 so there was a question which was asked in the morning that was of tetanus correct so let's see who will give this answer but before that if you want to use all this test series with the 10 full length test series section test for every subject live discussion of full length test you can use our application where we are having live paid course with the test series free subject wise and topic wise quizzes with the report card job alert admit card and examination date all exams previous year pdfs with the solution free all india scholarship with the report card apart from that topic wise free live classes free full length and sectional test with the report card free examination wise pdfs and practice sets most important thing most important thing your current affairs daily weekly monthly you will be getting from this application apart from that unlimited subject wise practice questions how you can download it just go to the play store type example over here click on the install button click on the open part go for the registration just do some registration and yes you can start using our application now there was a question for everyone and this was from the tetanus so this was the question of the day in the morning let's see who will give this answer if i'll talk about tetanus tetanus so it is actually caused by what is it bacteria is it fungi this is the last question of the day is it protozoa or is it virus so this is the question of the day which was asked in the morning so tetanus is caused by what tetanus is caused by dash so this is the question let's see who can give this answer uh, okay aman that's great you have already taken the subscription that's awesome so yes this was the question let's see who is going to give this answer and then we'll finish and then we'll finish so this was the question who is going to give this answer if i'm talking about the tetanus part when i'm talking about the tetanus it is caused by what is it bacteria fungi protozoa or virus so you can just even guess if you want so niketa is with bacteria great apart from niketa is there anyone who else wants to give this answer because this question is from previous year question it is the important one and it was asked previously so tetanus is caused by what see niketa is with the a option aman is also with a that is bacteria and both of you are correct if i talk about this bacteria please remember it is what it is clostridium tetani fine it is clostridium clostridium 
tetany. So this is actually the bacteria which causes tetanus. Fine. So this was the question from the morning. And tomorrow, in the morning, we'll be having previous year questions of human reproductive system live at 12. So 12 to 1, do not forget to join human reproductive systems previous year SSC's questions. And in the evening, we'll be having theoretical plus MCQ's question of CGL. So we'll be waiting for you all tomorrow morning at 12 where we'll be having discussion with the previous year questions of SSC. So okay then, please like this video, share it and yes in the comment section kindly let me know how was the session, how were the tricks. So yes, let's meet tomorrow at 12. Bye bye everyone, please take care.